If you're wondering what is the purpose of beta testing when it comes to game development, you've come to the right video. We interviewed Alex Stokes from Epic Games and he's going to give you the answer to your question. Welcome to our channel, How Real Life Works, where you can find more videos with Alex that we did as part of our big interview about QA in games. And you can also find more interviews with different people from different roles. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And let's get right into the content with Alex. How do companies utilize the, the open beta and feedback from users? Yeah. So the big thing about load testing is it's really complicated to do in a real world scenario because you can set up a server farm, you can set up scripts to, you know, try and test your server, but that's not the same as someone, you know, in Russia connecting with someone in India, in South America, in California, you know, in Canada and seeing what that looks like for everybody. It's not easy and also it's not cheap. So doing that at scale is really, really hard and it's a very good way I think that open betas are very useful for those two scenarios, which is one, figuring out if you have any network problems. And the thing to say about that too is it it shouldn't be the first time you've tested your network, right? Right. Um, because the player base is not going to be able to explain to you well in 90% of cases what's going wrong. They'll just let you know that it's wrong. So you need to have telemetry in place. You need to already know what most of your major issues were through internal network testing. And then it becomes like a supplemental resource to make sure that you don't have a horrible day one launch. Because when you have 10,000 people or 100 people, it's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is you can also, especially through Steam, get a good idea of what kind of hardware uh, your customer base is using and where that's going wrong. We saw like a really interesting sort of issue with a new world that came out recently where it was burning out a specific graphics card, like actually almost lighting it on fire, which was interesting. So that kind of stuff does happen. There's just so many different configurations out on the market. You can't possibly test them all. And it gives you that early info so that you know before people play it for day one. How much of the feedback do the team actually take in? Like, let's say if we went to beta and people don't like certain features or certain functions, like how much feedback does that go in? Because it sounds like, yeah, from what I'm hearing, mostly it's about like loading the the server and all of those things. It's not about like small parts of the gameplay. So normally when an open beta comes out, it's a month or two before release. And if you're releasing on consoles, that means you actually only have about two more weeks of development. It's not really enough time to iterate on features for launch. That said, there's usually an entire team of people, the UX team. I'm not a UX or design expert, so I'll put that out there. But um, there's a whole team of people there that will ingest all that feedback and start to think about ways that they can make changes to the game. And of course, you know, if it comes back and 80% of players hate everything about your game, you're probably going to delay your game, right? But yeah, usually it's not to change any features for launch. Like New World delayed by a month, and they specifically said in their press announcement, they are fixing bugs, they are not changing any features. And it's because they just don't have time.